Welcome back, everyone, to the last exhibition match for today. It's going to be a match between Anarchid and Masper on Vantage. Which seems to be everyone's favorite map these days. Although, I will say it is a pretty map. And rather unlike most Vantage games, we're going to be getting a Cloaky Mirror. Which has been a bit of a theme for the last little while. I did I miss something in the patch notes about Cloaky Power? Because I, this used to be a Rover Mirror pretty much every time. Or sometimes Rover Hover. But apparently today, it is all cloaky all the time. And to be fair, this these are matches played across the last week. Which is usually how I do it, actually. I try to find matches that are played in the last week that look like they'll be good. And then I cast those. Unless someone makes requests. Although, to be fair, I haven't been doing this a lot recently. I've been on a bit of a break, so... Eh, wait until I've done, like, two or three weeks in a row before making requests at this point. Anyway, with that, Masper is actually having a maybe a bit of a trouble with the, con with the ter territory control. It's looking like they are going to be getting out a bit ahead. Anarchid focusing a little bit more on their static defenses at home, focusing a little bit more on setting up their energy economy, while Masper not really worried about that too much. I would recommend building a few more metal or a few more metal a few more wind generators, which is exactly what they're doing. Just because that is going to help them to stabilize a bit. Because right now they are energy limited, and that's just easier to avoid being limited in. If we saw the last game where Randy was doing a bunch of work to not build units until they had just the right economic conditions, yeah, that's why. It's just faster to get the energy up. I should do that first. And at this point is Masper still managing to hold on to their territory just with the use of glaives. Just some good micro and terrain usage. So with that, Masper should be able to totally hold off everything Anarchist throwing at them. Actually, probably get a bit of an advantage in terms of, well, in terms of reclaim available. That's the main thing. Not a huge advantage, but yeah, still it adds up. It's like 150 metal reclaim so far. As for Anarchid, getting a bit more in the solar plant game and also focusing a little bit more on, again, the defenses being set up, but expanding a little bit slower. Masper being much more aggressive when it comes to how they set themselves up. And with that, I don't think there's any real room for Anarchid to get in. Lotus pushing away the Glaives, discouraging them from attacking. Wind is coming up, giving Masper enough energy to start using all their metal. Anarchid does finally have enough solar plants to be able to match that. Are going for the cloak are going for the conjurer as well. Looks like it's going to be on assist build, so that will be enough. Masper right now. Starting to get close to the point of excess. They're building enough outside of their factory. They're not doing too bad right now, but it's getting close. Especially if they start expanding, which I'm surprised they aren't, actually. I'm surprised they haven't been sending a couple conjurers around the map to start claiming more metal extractors right now. They have the energy to make it work, so it seems like it's just kind of curious. But then neither is Anarchid. They've only just now started sending another conjurer over to the south side of the map to claim that. But Masper appears to be much more focused on getting their overdrive going. Anarchid, on the other hand, will actually regret having done the... Oh, no! Oh, that was so close. That conjurer almost died. Actually, almost is a strong word right now. Masper knows there's something over there, but yeah, Anarchid. Oh, that was that was close. That conjurer going down would have been a huge loss. But Anarchid, I feel they've secured it. I mean, Masper's going to be coming around the side again, but Anarchid has enough glaives around the map. They should be able to stop any assault coming in to try to take out the metal extractor. Masper will not be able to stop that. This this expansion can go. It can continue. Also, should point out the reclaim going into the north side of the map. This is a common element of vantage, which we actually aren't seeing Masper take advantage of. The fact that there is a bunch of rocks over here. So it's helping Anarchid's economy out as well. Though, right now, Anarchid actually accessing a little bit thanks to not having any real assist builds at their home. Masper, on the other hand, making sure to use the metal they have. Though, at this point, it's still starting to get close because, well, they only have the one conjurer. The other one going to set up more of their overdrive grid, which is good, but again, it's still cutting it close. You never want to excess if you can avoid it. 
Although, admittedly, if this con once this conjure is done, it can start assist building as well. Or set up a caretaker, and that'll work too. May not matter, though. Anarchist Commander coming forward very quickly. Contesting Master's Commander directly. This probably isn't going to work out super well for Anarchist. They're going to need to retreat. I mean, the Glaives for Masper are... Com they're wrecking face. Not a single loss on their part. And this is not quite enough to take out Anarchist Commander on its own. But at the very least, it does push Anarchist back. Masper's Commander continuing to approach... Probably just as a posturing move. I, they're not going to be able to win directly. Anarchy, however, is going back. They want round two. I mean, considering they have the drones coming up, or, yes, considering they have the drones coming up, considering they have quite a few glaives also coming in, this might work out, though. Masper still... Oh, Masper not having quite as much luck this time with their own glaives. Doesn't quite get the Lotus up in time, though. Masper able to start damaging that, but it is up in time. Masper's commander has to retreat. This looks like it might be the end of Masper's commander... Glaives coming in, try to take it out, and they will indeed do so. Master's Commander goes down, wiping out a bunch of Glaives in the process, though. But now it's a question of who can take that reclaim. Glaives coming in from Masper, wanting revenge. Anarchist Commander also quite low. Not a whole lot defending it, other than a handful of Glaives, but there's enough reinforcements coming in here from Masper. Once Anarchist Glaives are gone, but it's... That's not quite enough. They came in... Came in too scattered. Weren't able to focus their fire, and as a result, Anarchist Commander is able to escape and survive. And, for also, start building a bunch of economy behind all that. Oops. So when you look at that together, Anarchist really got out of that exchange with the advantage. Masper had storage up, though. Does manage to make that sort of work, but they did lose 500 metal in the process. They had, they had about 500 metal stored, and then the Commander died, and that metal all went gone, was just gone. All went to excess. Because that's what happens when Commander dies. You lose that storage. So with that, it's going to be a bit of a bit of a problem. But then reclaim coming in here. That'll, I guess, refill the storage, as it were. <laughs> well, no. Actually, obviously, what you want to do is use that as part of an assist build project. But I don't know why we aren't seeing... Okay, Conjure's coming in. Really, though? Surprise is not being used to deal with that. Like, what is it being used for? Oh, it's not. The rally point was just set forward. Maybe for reclaim, but honestly, right now, Masper needs to worry more about building units than they do about reclaiming metal. Like, reclaiming the commander is fine. That's that's worth doing. But everything else, no, you need to worry about actually turning that metal into units because you're not accessing, but you're also... That metal's going into storage is not really doing much, and that's giving Anarchid openings like this. They can start taking out power plants, start... Doing much damage across the map. Again, this is still reclaiming Masper's territory, but no, that that would have been easier to deal with if this 500 now metal had not been just wasted, which is now going to excess because there aren't enough conjurers or caretakers being built up. Or Anakin, on the other hand, does have the one caretaker. They are also actually dealing with excess issues, turning that into enough power plants to not have to worry about it once they start getting reclaimed themselves, though, which is good. I think that's an, uh, not quite enough. Is this caretaker even working? I think this caretaker might be stopped. That that looks like the caretaker is not actually doing anything, which is unfortunate. But yes, it is not doing anything. It's pretty clear. I'm not sure Anakin's aware of that though. Still though, <coughs> excuse me. Still though, Anarchid managing to maintain most territory control, and honestly, even without this caretaker doing anything, which, again, what in the world is this caretaker doing? I don't know. But even with the caretaker stopped, it's still going to be a lot more for Anarchy, like a lot more stuff, a lot less excess. Getting a plate up here for Masper, though, which will help out avoid the excess. Though, again, it's not just excess, it's also storage. That's another big part of it. And Masper trying their best to scout out around, getting some harassment damage actually, but mostly just sacrificing glaives to see what's going on. Interestingly though, they haven't actually expanded over to the south side of the map, which granted they don't have a lot of conjurer, so I'm not surprised. But they also haven't been doing that. Okay, going for a third plate. 
Or sorry, second plate, third, well, third production queue. Really going hard on the cloakbots. Although, to be fair, with your play cloakbots, if you're focusing on that, building plates is a good idea. Just because it does mean you can parallel produce a ton of glaze. You know, because, as I mentioned before, plates have the advantage that you don't have to worry as much about the time it takes for units to walk off the pad. That's the biggest deal. Anyway, nice harassment coming in here from Masper over the south side. Should be able to take out this south area as well. The, no, the Faraday is actually going to put a big stop to that. If the glaives are spaced properly, which they're not, it'll be fine. But they're not, so it won't be fine. Although, to be fair, actually, no, it's not. It's not working out too badly. It's not the best spacing, but with that Lotus down, the Faraday isn't really much of a threat. The Faraday goes down as well. And with that, the expansion completely wiped out. Masper with only six glaives, seven glaives maybe, wiping out four metallic strategies and a conjurer. That is value. Which is exactly what Masper needs, considering they're down by a thousand metal attrition wise, and they haven't really managed an economic advantage this entire game, or certainly not one that they've turned into production. Like now, finally, they have that going for them. See how long that lasts. What with the Phoenix is coming up. Oof, that is that going to take out all the. I think that will take out all the slings. Indeed, all four of the slings burned to death from the Phoenix attack. Very valuable Phoenix shot there, and that puts Masper in even more of an awkward position when it comes to trying to deal with this. Nice dodge from the Glaives, though. Avoids all the Napalm coming down, and allows them to just continue to walk in with impunity, taking out one Conjurer, and looks like possibly a second... Yeah, second Conjurer's gonna go down as well. There's no stopping that. Two Conjurers going down for free. Anarchid right now... They only have two up to the north, but nothing to the south. Entire south side cannot be rebuilt on. Not for now, anyway. Over to the north, there's a little bit more defenses going for them. But again, this is a question of what... What does Masper have to worry about when it comes to what they need to raid out? Because right now, they actually have an economic advantage, and they can use that for production. This is not an empty economic advantage. With the plates up, all three of the... Oh, well, the main factory in both plates running at full blast, this is going to be Masper able to actually build up everything they need. Kind of curious, what is the value right now? Oops, that's not what I wanted at all. This is what I wanted. Don't do this for a while and you get a, you forget the muscle memory for some of this stuff. Army value. Masper's still slightly behind, though it's kind of going back and forth, but only behind by about a thousand. Granted, that represents a 33% difference in army value, but Masper's micro has been pretty on point this game. So honestly, I don't know how long that's going to last. I think that Masper's going to be able to get that attrition advantage back in their favor. And again, they do have a... Or they have been having an economic advantage. They certainly... Well, I just can't say they're producing faster. The economic advantage is anarchids very slightly. So yes, that doesn't help. But still, Masper is being pretty efficient at getting rid of all the stuff that anarchid is throwing at them. Phoenix is notwithstanding. Granted, the Phoenixes have also been quite the problem, and I'm a little surprised we aren't seeing anything to deal with that. No gremlins. No switch off to something else to set that up. Not even hacksaws or something like that. Hacksaws, razors. There are several options for dealing with air units just harassing your forces, and none of them are being used right now. Or send the glaives to the air pad when all the phoenixes are on it. That actually is also a really good idea. Takes out one of the phoenix, two of the phoenixes. Phoenix is bombing their own air pad, trying to save the day, but no, ends up just killing the air pad. Forcing the phoenixes to use the airplane factory in order to actually refuel. That's going to massively cut down on the rating. Brilliant play by Masper. That, that basically opens them up. They don't have to worry about phoenixes anymore for at least another five or six minutes. Just in the time it takes to rebuild the air pad and rebuild the phoenixes. Yeah, it's going to take a while, and none of that's actually happening. So the pressure is off on Masper's main line, or Masper's front line, as they continue to harass quite effectively, taking up more and more of Anarchid's, Anarchid's stuff. Another metal extractor goes down. Conjurers are still up, though. The Faradays with the Lotuses will... Like, both the Lotuses? Yeah, that will be enough to stop those glaives. I do kind of wish Masper had started expanding over to the south, though. They have some free conjurers. It, sorry, that's a gremlin. They have some free-ish conjurers that could go down and just expand down there, reclaim stuff. I am surprised they haven't. 
But then again, they might be heavily focused on trying to micro this or trying to make the most of all the glaives they have, even though getting that economic advantage would really put them ahead. However, the attrition advantage is in their favor, which means their army advantage is very slightly in their favor as well. Neither player able to really expand, so yeah, with that, it really just does come down to attrition. Oof, which these Phoenixes are making complicated, along with the Reaver. Anarchate switching over a little bit more to Riot. Just taking care of the Glaze rather than trying to fight them toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Which I gotta say, I do think is a good move. That being said, Masper does have a pretty secure hold on their corner of the map. They just don't have a whole lot of stuff to actually push with. I mean, the Slings are doing an okay job, but... They're not able to do all that much. Anarchist Command are able to heal faster than the slings can damage them. Not enough glaives to really deal with it either. Although, glaives coming around the side, trying their best. Take out a metal extractor. Don't really manage much else. To be fair, though, there are no conjures around that, so if it goes down, it just stays down. And actually, considering the way that the conjure is being built up by Masper, Masper might be trying to take this north side expansion. They might not be trying to expand to the south and instead just try to take the north side and basically wrap around Anarchy. That would be an interesting move. I think it would work. I mean, it's a little bit risky, especially since it... No, I guess, yeah, because you use the units here to cover. Yeah, no, the way, the way Masper is playing, this makes a lot of sense. And the fact that they have been consistently stopping the expansions Anarchy wants over to the south side of the map means that Masper doesn't have to worry about having the south side taken and having the map split north-south. Because they know that that's not been built up. Not to mention continuing to harass over the side, taking care of more and more contours. Looks like they want to set up to take out this expansion over to the north as well. Condra, oof, that might go down. It does go down. Manipulating line of sight, Masper staying, ha hanging up behind the Condra so the rest of the glaze cannot protect it. Still kind of risky, though. And there's that air pad coming in. The replacement is being built up. That means the Phoenixes are going to be a threat once again. Though, with the Gremlins having been built up, it's not going to be anywhere near as pronounced a threat. Still, though, Anarchid with the counter raiding forces. Masper is dealing with them okay with good positioning, but unfortunately, they are losing Gremlins, and they are slowly losing ground. Able to take out... Still... Able to punch above their weight as far as the gremlin, as far as the elimination of, not gremlins, elimination of glaives goes. But again, they just didn't have the numbers to begin with to really make that a success. It's it's more just a fighting retreat that's doing enough damage to slow things down. Second force comes in here, but it's mostly gremlins, not enough to actually get rid of any of these glaives. And that is going to be a problem. There are no glaives following that up. There's no reavers as well. So it's entirely a matter of glaive numbers and positioning, and Masper has... Well, they have the positioning down, but not the numbers. Glaives are coming around the back as well, trying to take out what they can, mostly just forcing the, forcing everything to be burned up by all the phoenixes. I think the middle charge is going to survive. But yeah, this seems to be Masper's primary strategy, is just force the phoenixes to destroy more in their attempt to defend than the glaives ever could, really. And indeed, that Medley Shredder does barely survive. Well, still, decent positioning coming in here from Masper, able to hold off for a reasonable amount of time, but it's, the problem is it's just holding off. It's I'm not saying they're not winning, they're just not losing as quickly. And I'm kind of surprised we haven't seen a single Reaver. Like, one Reaver strategically placed would be enough to support the rest of the Glaives and stop Anarchist Glaives from coming in. I realize it's not very mobile, but, when you consider that there's this choke point that's constantly being assaulted, or this front side area that's constantly being assaulted, wouldn't necessarily be the bad, a bad idea. Especially, especially as the gremlins are the main speed limitation. The glaives have to slow down for the gremlins anyway. Reavers wouldn't be that big of a difference, but it would mean more gremlins would survive, or the gremlins at all would survive. Not just more, any. Any amount of gremlins. Masper Hover does spot the Firewalker has been built. And Anarchid also starting to expand over the south side successfully. Clay is trying to come in to stop that, but it's simply not enough to get rid of either the Lotus or the Conjurers. 
So for mass person, it's becoming harder and harder for them to get in here. Trying their best to take all this out, but it's just not enough. Unfortunately for them, it's... I mean, the factory is a lot more HP than an air... Than the... Yeah, than the air... What's it? Why am I calling it? Air pad. I forget the name of that. Yes, the, the factory is much more HP than the air pad, so you can't quite do the Phoenix burn down trick as effectively. Man, Masper is... I don't know why... Again, I don't know why either player is not building Reavers, to be honest. The first player to build Reavers is going to completely wipe out their opponent's slave army. Like, two or three Reavers... Oh, hey, there it is. Anarchid, building the Reaver. Going for a raid with a Reaver, though, but... Actually, I don't disagree with that, to be honest. Get a bit of damage done. Take care of the Glaives that are trying to come in to defend, because Masper is building nothing but Glaives. Finally getting some Ronin up. But a surprising 18 minutes into the game, we're finally seeing... We're finally seeing Reavers, but it may not matter as the north side expansion being attacked heavily. South side expansion actually looks like it did ultimately... Oh, it just wasn't built up. It wasn't destroyed, it just wasn't built up. Oh, if an Anarchid single file running into Masper's entire force. And unfortunately, nailing their own army as well with the Phoenixes, so Masper having a field day when it comes to Mune and Micro, and therefore much number of attrition. This Reaver has been doing an amazing job in the back lines, just wrecking Masper's entire base. This is... This really proves my point. Like, the first person to build a Reaver is going to get a lot of damage done. And that's exactly what Anarchid did. Unfortunately, that damage was largely just compensating for the fact that they had lost essentially everything in the back lines for their own metal extractors, for a bunch of their conjurers. And now... It, Masper is indeed taking the north side expansion, along with all of the reclaim, which... Oh my... Okay, well, if you look at the reclaim that's nearby, it's not quite that expensive. It's... In, oops. It is about... Wait, what? Really? Why is it listing that little? There we go, that's better. Yeah, 1600 metal reclaim. That's... That is a lot. That is plenty. And on top of the territory advantage and just the static economy advantage, yeah, Masper. Unfortunately for Anarchid, Masper was well ahead before that Ronin or that Reaver got in the back lines. And while that Reaver did a lot of damage, it was kind of too little too late, and any further Reavers are going to be taken out by Ronin. So it's not a thing that can happen twice. And Masper continuing to harass around the map, continuing to take out metal extractors, continuing to lose glaives as or dam get glaives damage as a result, but still. Taking out metal extractors, not quite able to make the Phoenixes hurt anything, but they've done enough damage with the Phoenixes. Friendly fire. It's not the biggest deal. Of course, with the fireworkers coming in, that could make a difference, but with Masper the way they're set up right now, I don't know if it's gonna be that big of a deal. I mean, the only downside, of course, is that there isn't a whole lot of reclaim being taken over to the north side of the map. There's lots of reclaim, just none of it is actually being reclaimed. So Masper, despite having a territory advantage and an economic advantage, simply does not have the conjurers in place to take all that reclaim. At least they won't until they build up all the metal extractors, or at least that's how they're playing it. Honestly, best to do the opposite, because, I mean, the conjurer is going to give you five metal per second as opposed to the metal extractors, which give you two each. But that is not what Masper is going for. And having fully switched over to jump bots, we are... It's going for a puppy assault? Is that what it is? I guess it's what it is. Just try to... Try to power through with puppies. I mean, the glaives can't do much to stop it. The puppies will kill them. Just wipe out the north side of the puppies. I think this is Anarchy's entire play. Just hit this, use the reclaim to get a bunch more puppies, and then use those puppies to wipe out everything, like, all along here. Same time, we have nice little cloaked Ronin Reaver mix. Not sure what it's going to manage to do, though, especially with all those puppies walking around. Gotta be careful, it doesn't get revealed. Ah, nope, never mind, it got revealed. It has been revealed. It is too late. The Ronin are not in position. The puppies are coming back to get revenge. Masper, unfortunately, despite that brief economic advantage, 
did not get make, make the most of it. Again, it's just you need more conjures, you need more reclaim. The reclaim is the primary priority. You do not build metal extractors if there's reclaim around, because reclaim is just that much more worth it. Like yes, metal extractors are permanent, but when you have that much reclaim and 900 metal worth of reclaim in an area, just reclaim it first. Again, you have the entire work, or entire constructor build power instead of just two metal per second usually for a metal extractor. Like, five metal per second is a super expensive metal extractor. It's a common... Like, I think all of the constructors at this point have it as minimum. I don't think four... I don't double check, but I don't think four is even a minimum anymore. But yeah, that was just... That was really scrappy. All things considered, that was a really scrappy, weird game. I mean, I'm just surprised neither player really went for anything as far as... Like, raider riots go. They went... No, raider back and forth. I mean, I liked... I liked Masper's Micro. They were doing a really good job with that, although, actually... Okay, according to the stats, they weren't, but... It seemed like they were doing a good job with that, at least locally. Kept their army value up, despite the fact that they almost never had an income advantage. But it just didn't matter. Like, again, Anarchid got the backline damage, but more importantly, that switch to jump bots wasn't contested. And the expansions that Anarchy was trying to go for in the south side eventually got taken. And ultimately, more importantly, the glaives going around the map, wiping out all the gremlins and just taking out all of Masper's territory control, the real security in the territory, that could have been stopped by a single reaver. The speed doesn't matter. They were already moving as slow as the gremlins were going, so the reavers wouldn't have slowed them down anymore. But they would have made the glaives unable to attack and forced a switch to Ronin, which would have made Anarchy's army less mobile which would have given Asper much better control over the parts of the map that they had control over. It would have secured that, would have allowed them to build up more stuff there, they could have sent more conjurers in more easily and get the... I mean, they should have done that anyway, but it would have been... had more confidence to do that. But yeah, that... I think a large part of it was Masper was kind of tunnel vision on Anarchist Commander on the south side of the map and also wasn't sure they could actually go for a direct assault. But again, a single Reaver webbing out the Glaive army would have opened things up for a direct assault. Yeah, that is... Hey, Anarchy pointing on the chat that 180 metal reclaim is equivalent to a plus 4 metal extractor. That was 900 metal worth of reclaim in the field. So, in that case, no. I think they're... Especially after a metal extractor or two had been built, absolutely go for the reclaim. Yeah, I am just honestly surprised that that was that was the way it was played out. Like that was a weird game. I mean, from the beginning, the fact that it was a cloaky bot mirror on Vantage, a map which largely favors rovers. I mean, not that glaives are a bad choice. It's just that it is. Histor has generally been a map that favors rovers. Although I suppose I'm... No, it's not... Uh... A lot of people play rovers on it, I suppose is a better way of putting it, because come to think of it, there's you know these steep hills in the center of the map that can make it kind of difficult to use. Like, it does slow vehicles down trying to climb up, though, so I can see why you wouldn't go for vehicles. But, I don't know, even then, just... It is still mostly flat, and you do still often see rovers here. But yeah, for that... Actually, what was damage dealt? Oh, Masper dealt more damage. They didn't kill as many expensive things, but they dealt way more damage. That's that's the way to talk about the micro thing. Yeah, the, the damage that was dealt by Anarchid when it was dealt had much more direct cost impact. The damage that Masper dealt was greater in absolute numbers, but it wasn't actually killing things for cost. So yeah, that was that. That was a really weird game, but kind of interesting. So with that, that is going to be it. So thank you all for watching. That's it for today. So thanks for watching, and have a good night, everyone.